Good morning, church. Good morning. I want to welcome you to First United this morning. I'm glad you're here, and I pray God's blessings upon you as we spend this next hour plus together. I do have a few announcements here that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, first, let's talk about our COVID announcement. If you've been fully vaccinated, including the two weeks after your second injection, uh, you do not need to wear a mask while you are in the church. Um, if you have not received your vaccination, we politely ask that you please continue to wear a mask and social distance while you are in church. Announcement number two, tithings and offerings. If you feel led to give to First United, uh, we do have two containers at the entrances and exits of the sanctuary on both sides. Um, if you feel led to give, we would invite you to place that in there. If you are interested in online giving, uh, you can talk to our finance chair, Chuck Marsh. Announcement number three, prayer request. Uh, please use firstunitedprayer at gmail.com for all of your prayer requests, or you may call the church office uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Number four, if you're interested in receiving a CD or a disc of the service, please let Leslie Neal know, and she will be happy to make a copy of the service for you. Number five, we are now able to provide nursery care during church. Uh, please encourage anyone with infants that we now have this option to provide um, as a service. Uh, lessons will be taught to the children, and it's a great way to pave a foundation for faith in God. Um, as we move forward and see the need for other age groups or needs, we will reassess and see what can be provided. Announcement number six. Uh, First United now has a live stream feature on Facebook if you are interested. In order to join the group, you need to request access to that group. Uh, this is a different group than the current First United Facebook page uh, that we have. Uh, this group has been strictly created for the viewing of our online services. I'm told that for the most part, the viewing quality is great and the sound is great on those videos, so we will keep doing that uh, moving forward. Uh, that group is called the Sunday Watch Party of First United of Berkeley Springs. Announcement number seven, we've got several upcoming meetings that we need to place on our calendar. Um, on Monday, which is tomorrow, June the 7th, at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary, the task force will be meeting. On Tuesday, June the 8th, at 5.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary, there will be a vacation Bible school meeting. And then looking ahead into the following week, trustees and church council will meet on Tuesday, June the 15th, trustees at 6 p.m. and church council at 7 p.m. Uh, next Sunday, June the 13th, I want to make sure I invite all of you, we will have the baptism of Caroline Belcher. We will also welcome to our service Reverend Michael Needham from Union Chapel, who will be joining us as well to share in this important sacrament as we baptize uh, Caroline, and uh, it's just going to be a great day, so I would encourage you all to be part of that. Um, we do need uh, another announcement here that's not on the slide. We do need ushers and greeters, so if you are interested in that, uh, please see Ken Jones or myself, and we would be happy uh, to get you on the list and connect you uh, with the right people. And the last announcement that I have, um, as you notice, we do have a TV that is malfunctioning this morning. Um, so we apologize for that. Uh, Larry said I can blame it on him. I'm not going to. This has nothing to do with Larry. Larry, I got your back, man. Thank you, bro. I'll take the blame on that one. So we will, we will work on that. Uh, yeah, it's the gremlin. We'll go with that. And uh, so we'll work on that this week and see if we can get that addressed. That is all the announcements that I have this morning. So at this moment, I would like to invite you to prepare, prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our opening of Reflective Hymn. Patty, I'll turn it over to you.
Will you please join with me now in our call to worship? God will guide us. God's Spirit will sustain us. Christ will welcome us home. We are all God's family. Come now, brothers and sisters of Christ. We come now to worship with humble hearts. Will you please bow your heads for a moment of prayer? Dear gracious God, thank you for being our God, the one true God. Thank you for providing us the grace to be in your presence. We know, Lord God, that you are always on time. You don't waste time, and you use time that we have to teach us and mold us. Father, this morning, teach and mold us now as we come into this place of worship. Allow us to feel strong with your Holy Spirit and presence when we may feel weak. We know from Philippians chapter 4 that we are not to be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. We are to come to you and to give all of our requests to you, Father. And one of our requests this morning is to be filled with your Holy Spirit and know your presence here with us today. Let us all come together now as a family of Christ. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Patty, I'll turn it back over to you.
beautiful? Yes. Thank you, Patty. Beautiful. As we come time now for our sharing of joys and concerns here, I have a few that I want to bring to your attention before I open it up uh, to the floor. Uh, we want to continue to remember all those families that are mourning the loss of loved ones. I know many in our community um, have passed away over the past couple of weeks. We want to remember those individuals and anyone that you may know uh, that is mourning the loss of a loved one. Uh, we want to make sure we remember them, especially like the family of like Gerson, many other families in our community. So please remember them. We want to continue prayers up for Beulah as she continues her healing and recovery. You're looking good. <laughs> Doesn't she look good? I mean, yes. okay, I just want to make sure I'm not the only one that's on that. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> uh, we want to continue prayers for Diane Fox. She will be having some upcoming tests and exams uh, to try to figure out what's going on with her and where. We're praying that they can find out some answers there. Uh, we want to continue prayers for Tiffany's grandfather, Louis Sidowick. Um, he is now home recovering, but he's still got quite a journey to go. So remember him in your prayers. Also, Linda Walker sent out an update on uh, Tara Raines. Uh, she, Tara had the heart transplant Friday morning. The transplant went well. Uh, she was alert and responded to commands, and that was as of yesterday afternoon. Um, and the expectation is that Tara will be at Hopkins two to three weeks, and then we'll come home for continued recovery. So we want to remember them in our prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns this morning that you would like to lift before the congregation? Yes. So Bobby Johnson's uh, sister-in-law, Cheryl Fox, um, is currently in the nursing home, has a brain disorder, and so we want to remember Cheryl in our prayer. Are there others? I'd like to ask for Tiffany and Jay prayer. Okay. Continue prayers for Tiffany and Jay. Yeah. Will you bow your heads? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving Father, we pause during our morning worship service to lift up several concerns that we have. But first, Lord God, we want to count our blessings and sing your praises. Thank you for the gorgeous weather. Thank you for allowing us to come into this place and to worship you. We praise you and thank you for Tara's heart transplant and that it went very well. We praise and thank you that uh, Beulah continues on her road of healing and recovery. We praise God that Tiffany's grandfather Lewis is doing well and on his road to recovery. Lord God, when we look at everyone and everything that surrounds us, we often look at all the, the struggles and the challenges. But Lord God, we also need to stop and look for these joys and small and large miracles as you show us your might and your power as you take care of your people us but lord god we also want to lift before you several concerns that we have we want to continue prayers for the many families that are mourning the loss of loved ones we want to continue prayers for healing for beulah we want to lift up diane fox and her upcoming tests continue prayers for lewis and his healing journey. Continue prayers for Tara and that long journey ahead. We want to lift before you Tiffany and Jay. We want to lift before you Cheryl Fox as well. Father God, there is a lot of needs, but the list is never too long for you. Father God, we also lift up all the individuals on our prayer list, Lord God, that just because they're not mentioned, it doesn't mean you do not know their needs or concerns. So, Lord God, hear those needs and concerns this morning. 
And Lord God, we also ask your Holy Spirit come into our hearts and hear any unspoken requests that we have. Hear our prayers. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So this month, we're going to take a look at kind of a variety of topics almost, and that's because it seems like almost every Sunday this month, there's something special that is happening. Um, and so we're going to kind of take those things and look at them. For example, the baptism next week, we're going to talk about baptism. We're going to look at that. Father's Day is the following Sunday, so of course we're going to pause and talk about the importance of fathers, fathers and their callings. And then the last Sunday, we will possibly have a presentation, so stay tuned for that. And so it's going to be kind of a lot of different topics, um, but all of which are very important. So this morning, we're going to talk about being guided by the Spirit. And that's going to take us into Galatians chapter 5, and specifically looking at verses 22 through 26. Hear are these words. By contrast... The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, and envying one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. So when I began my devotion, I'm really praying about this passage, I couldn't help but think about the times growing up when I participated in these things called trust exercises. A lot of times they're called team building exercises. Some of you may be familiar with some of those. So by trust exercises, what I really mean are those exercises where you had to rely on someone else in order to complete the task. So for example, uh, the trust club. I was never good at that. You would not want me as a partner for the trust club because I would have a hard time, not that I didn't trust you, but well, really wrapping my head around the fact that somebody's going to be able to catch me when I fall backwards with my eyes closed. Having that much trust in someone. That was my least favorite one at all. I failed at that numerous times. Sorry for those who may have been part of that. Another one I often remember is when you had to be guided around obstacles with your eyes closed and you had to listen to your partner to be able to guide around certain holes or trees or whatever. That one I didn't do too bad at. But I remember closing my eyes and walking around and you really had to listen to your assigned partner's voice. You had to know your assigned partner's voice in the midst of all the other noises that was happening around you. So you may have had other partners, other people, other partner groups that were talking to one another. There's always the outside noises of traffic if you're around that, animals, birds. So you really had to zone in on your partner's voice and be guided to be safe. That's a trust exercise. It was really hard to do. Because in order to be successful, you had to make sure you could tune out the rest of the world and focus strictly on your partner's voice to guide you. You had to trust him or her. 
One time I remember my one particular partner told me I had to turn left and walk two steps. But I thought he said right, so I turned right and went one step because one step took me to the ground. By the time he got my attention, it was too late. I had fallen to the ground and walked right into the hole into the field where we were completing the exercise. I struggled to hear only his voice when there were all these other sounds around. That was hard. It is these moments that I often reflect on when I read Galatians chapter 5 and really look at the fruits of the Spirit and being guided by the Spirit and what that really means. The best way to go about this, though, is to kind of work backwards a little bit from our passage. So I'm going to start with verse 25 and kind of work our way back a little bit. So verse 25 says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. We know from reading this verse that we are guided by the Holy Spirit. Yes, this is the same Spirit that came during Pentecost and the same Spirit that allowed the church to begin as we know it today. But the reason why I think about this verse in connection with my story about trust exercises is because when I was being guided to avoid obstacles, I had to listen very intently and be tuned in to what, what I was being told from my partner. See, when we are guided by the Spirit, we have to be tuned in and focused to be able to listen and to know the direction we need to go, to tune out the worldly ways in order to be guided in the right direction. And as verse 25 tells us, we have to live by the Spirit. Well, wait a second. How do we live by the Spirit? This raises a whole other question. What does it mean to live by the Spirit? To live by the Spirit means our hearts, our minds, our souls are always oriented toward God. And everything that we do and everyone we encounter, everything is focused toward Him. We are constantly tuned into the Spirit. But you have to welcome the Spirit into your heart. We tune into the Holy Spirit by praying and worshiping, coming to church, meditating, sitting in silence, listening to music, journaling, taking walks in nature. However you connect with God are ways you can begin to live by the Spirit. Because you have to stay connected to the Spirit to live by the Spirit. When we are connected by the Spirit, then our outward actions become just that. They're verbs, they're actions. And everything we do will reflect us being guided by the Spirit. For me personally, I have to have silence to really be able to focus. To be able to pray. To really be tuned in to what God is telling me. You can ask my wife. I take that very seriously. If I have any ounce of noise, it distracts me when I'm really trying to listen to what God's trying to tell me. That's me. But for you, it could be something different. It could be a worship service. It could be tuning in to music. I know many of you love to be in nature. It's a great way to connect with God and God's beauty. But however you connect... It's how you begin to continue welcoming that Spirit inside of you so that we all can be guided by the Spirit. To be guided means the Spirit lives in us. And as Romans chapter 12 reminds us, a very familiar verse, be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. To discern God's direction for our lives means we are wanted to be guided by the Spirit. We literally zone into God and only God and allow His Spirit to tell us the next steps we are supposed to take. 
But all of this begins on the inside because of the transformation that has to take place in the mind, in the hearts, in the soul. What Peter and those apostles and those 3,000 plus individuals experienced on Acts chapter 2 and Pentecost, that same spirit is the same spirit that transforms us. In order to be guided by the spirit, the spirit has to dwell in us. Let me repeat that. In order to be guided by the spirit, the spirit has to dwell in us. We have to be filled with it. I came across an interesting story. I want to share this one with you. D.L. Moody, pretty familiar evangelist and well-known theologian, was speaking to a large audience one time. He held up a glass with a lid on it and asked the following question. He said, how can I get the air out of this glass? And one man shouted, well, you've got to suck it out with a pump. You've got to get the air out. And Mr. Moody replied, well, that would create a vacuum and it would shatter the glass. So that method is not going to work. After numerous other suggestions, Mr. Moody finally smiled. He picked up a pitcher of water. He filled the glass in front of people and he said, there, all the air is now removed as I filled it with water. He then went on to explain that victory in the Christian life is not accomplished by sucking out a sin here or there, but rather being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a powerful image. To be filled that much. To want our hearts to be filled that much. To the point that if he would have continued pouring, what would have happened? It would have overflowed. That's what we want in here. For it to overflow. Now, while tackling the sins of our lives is important, certainly is that, we also need to remember the grace that God gives us. That being filled with the Spirit allows us to be guided by the Spirit, which allows us to be forgiven. Verse 24, I want to go to that one now. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We cannot tackle sin without the Spirit. We cannot. We cannot understand our next steps without the Spirit. The more we are filled the more we avoid things like being conceited, being caught in competition, or envying one another. Paul also talks about the fruits of the Spirit. So the more we are filled, we not only avoid sins like being conceited or envying one another, but the more we are filled, we begin to see the fruit of that Spirit working inside of us which includes love and joy and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness. And yes, one of the hardest ones, I think, self-control. But once again, working from the inside to the outside. We have to be transformed on the inside to get what we need on the outside. Our hearts need to be filled with the Spirit. When it is, our actions will produce the fruits of the Spirit. This is a good thing. But we have to want it. And we have to open our hearts and our minds to it. <coughs> See, Paul understood that. Paul got that. Which is why he's writing to Galatia. Let me give you a little background here on why this letter is even here in the first place. See, Paul emphasized this so much because of what was happening in these churches in Galatia. Now keep in mind, Paul here, our writer, was the key leader in beginning many of these churches in this area, including Galatia. But upon Paul's departure from that area, and over time, 
people began to believe that they were saved by the law and not saved by grace. So in other words, you're saved by following these laws and not saved by God's forgiveness. Paul says, wait a second, whoa, 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 whoa. We are imperfect people. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. We are saved rather on grace that is given to us through Jesus Christ. Not based on how well we follow these laws. Paul's trying to make that point very clear. Another thing that I find interesting, Paul's not just randomly mentioning these fruits of the Spirit off the top of his head. Paul is using these fruits of the Spirit to show discipleship and to help people to see if they are living a life marked by God, they will see these things in action versus the flesh and sin or by the worldly ways, the laws of the world. So how does that apply to us? Well, yes, we have laws of the world that are needed. Absolutely. 100% agree. Paul is not suggesting we don't follow laws like speed limits or stealing or grand theft auto. Don't leave here saying, well, pastor said it's a free-for-all. That's not what I'm saying. Rather, Paul is making mention to the ways of the world and what the world says is okay, like being conceited or self-centered or pinning yourself against someone else. Competition. All these ways of the world that the world says, hey, this is what you need to be doing, worrying about yourself, doing what's best for you. When Jesus says, no, we are to serve one another as Christ has served us. That's what Paul is talking about, thinking that way versus the worldly ways. We are called for so much more if that spirit lives inside of us. In my studies this week, I read an interesting commentary on this passage. The author, Alexis Wade, wrote about how maybe instead of seeing these qualities as the fruits of the Spirit, we need to see them as the fruit of the Spirit. One versus many, singular versus plural. In other words, we all show the fruit of because of the one true Holy Spirit. I would have to contemplate this more. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but it was an interesting thought to really see, do we, is it a fruit of the Spirit or the fruits of the Spirit? One Spirit produces one fruit. That includes love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and so on. But regardless, bringing back to this overall general message here, we have to welcome the Spirit into our lives so that we can be guided by it. And the fruit of the Spirit can only be developed, nurtured, and cultivated by God. Not you, not me. By God. And His power. And His might. But we have to be open to it. This Holy Spirit is an amazing gift of God that literally transforms us into the people of God and the people that God wants us to be. And I have seen the power of that Holy Spirit change lives of people that the world would say that's impossible. But God comes in and makes it possible because the Spirit transformed the person from the inside. That's where it starts. The Spirit will continue to surprise us. So what can we do to aid us in being guided by the Spirit? Well, first, we have to seek the kingdom of God first. And we have to welcome the Spirit in. Then we have to faithfully devote ourselves to learning about God's ways and what we're taught. We do these things by being in constant prayer, coming to worship, honoring our promises and commandments, taking care of our bodies, honoring the Sabbath day, consistently reading scripture, and yes, confessing our sins to God and talking to God about our struggles. That's all part of the journey. That is part of the growing process. 
When we really begin to make that devotion to God, it is then we will see our guidance come from the Holy Spirit. Do not let small roadblocks or challenges or struggles or even your own doubts stop you from experiencing this wonderful gift. The Spirit is stronger than anything we will face. God is stronger than anything we will face. So as we close, I want to encourage us all to think about how we welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives. And what we have to do to be guided by the Spirit. How are we opening ourselves up to the Spirit? What can we do to make it better in terms of opening ourselves up? So that we can understand and listen and be guided. Pray about it. Let God speak to you. What is God telling you today? I'm going to close with this story. A 12-year-old boy was saved at a revival one time. Later, his friends questioned him about it. One person said, Did you see a vision? Another said, did you hear God speak? The boy answered all these questions with a simple no. No, did not see a vision. No, did not hear God speak. Then someone else asked the boy, well, how do you know you were saved? The boy replied, well, it's like when you catch a fish. You can't see the fish. You can't necessarily hear the fish. You can hear the water, but you can't necessarily hear the fish. You just feel them tugging on the line a little bit. I felt God tugging at my heart. That was his response. Is God tugging at your heart today? Do you feel the Spirit telling you to do something or think about something? Tune in, listen, and be willing to be guided by the Spirit. You never know where you'll end up. May God continue to bless each one of us. Amen? This time I'm going to turn it over to Patty for a moment of reflection.
this time, we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I do want to ask, just because we reopened Sunday school, I know things are a little different. Does anyone need a communion cup? If so, I'm going to kindly ask an usher to bring you one. Do not be embarrassed. Anyone need one? We want to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to participate and welcome to you. This time, let us begin with our liturgy and begin with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you'll take a moment to silently pray. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now beginning with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of thee. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we all proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Before we participate, I would like to invite you to join with me once again in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will peel off the first, the top part, that'll get you the wafer. The body of Christ given for you and for me. Amen. And if you'll pull back a second part. Having some difficulties. Okay. The blood of Christ given for you and for me. Amen. If you will kindly hold on to your containers on the way out, the ushers will have a bag that you can place these containers in so that we can avoid sticking them in the pews. Uh, just to avoid contamination and things like that. So I want to thank you all for worshiping with us today. I pray and hope that you were able to feel the Spirit and sense God's presence here with us today and really connect with God on that level. Receive the benediction. And now as you go, go out into the world. Go forth with forgiveness and grace. Go forth with compassion and love. Go forth together as a family of Christ. And let us all remember the importance of being guided by the Spirit. Go now, go in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you as you go.